Art and Pepe, they're generous and they're kind and they're funny and they're two of the hardest working people I've ever known. It was a long, complicated process how we ended up being bar owners because we were the least likely bar owners. Sidetrack was a postage stamp, but it was the go-to bar. We were told by some people, this will never fly in Chicago. It became this huge thing. I've been coming to Sidetracks now going on maybe like 30 years. The bar that they run is probably the best gay bar in the country. On the north side of Chicago, the gay bar sidetrack has played an outsized role in advancing LGBTQ rights. Art Johnson and Jose Pepe Peña founded the bar in the 1980s. It became a pillar of the city's gay business district and the center of the community's political fight for equality. The new film, Art and Pap, streaming on Peacock, showcases their love story that sparked a movement. Art Johnson and Jose Pepe Peña are with us now. Pepe, you are the dashing bartender who convinced Art to move to Chicago, make it his home. Tell us how this story started. Well, we both fell in love with Chicago. I mean, it's a wonderful city. And, and the people here are so welcoming. And I cannot imagine being able to do what we've done in any other place in the, anywhere else. Art, there's an anecdote uh, about your work as an activist that you once got, get ready for this, guys, nuns to lobby City Hall <laughs> for gay rights in order to get votes from a Catholic councilman. T talk to us about that and about how Sidetrack really became the center, not just of community, but of a political movement. Well, Alicia, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So. Chicago has always been a very Catholic city. And when we were trying to pass basic laws that you couldn't fire people or deny them uh, housing because of their sexual orientation, we were running up against uh, all women who said, I'm Catholic, I have a Catholic ward, I can't vote for this. So we reached out to activist nuns, many of whom had led the civil rights work in the American South. And they had settled in Chicago with women's shelters. And these radical nuns became our best allies. When an alderman would say, we would seek out a nun from the same order that had taught the alderman when they were in school. And when the alderman would say, I can't vote for this because I'm Catholic. And the nun would say, whoa, hang on a moment. I'm Catholic too. And the nuns became our allies. We wondered, why don't we know about this? And that's because nuns don't self-promote. Many of the nuns who helped us were later shut down by the Vatican because of their support of gay people, but it made all the difference in Chicago. And uh, the, uh, when we were told over and over and over, Chicago will never pass basic gay rights, and we proved them wrong with the help of the Catholic nuns. Absolutely incredible. Pepe, your first jobs in Chicago, they were in gay bars. I wonder how those experiences and that, that immersion in the community then came to influence your activism and your thinking about what it would require to move things forward. Well, we bars were the center of any activism. That's, we didn't have churches, we didn't have places to meet. So the bars were the natural place. And, and so I found myself in the middle of a lot of things just because I was working in a bar, in a gay bar. And I saw the rates and I saw the harassment and I saw the, the way we were treated. And uh, that sort of made a big difference in how I look at things and what things needed to be changed for the better. You know, Art, I, I, will, I will admit to you that we in our production meetings have been struggling with the, the duality of this moment, that on one hand, this is Pride Month, and Pride yes. is meant to be a celebration and a recognition of the progress that has been made. And on the same hand, this is a political program. I mean, we're following what is happening in states. We watch these teenagers have to go to school board meetings to advocate for themselves and their families and for basic rights. And I think there's often this, this tug, this feeling that we're moving in the wrong direction. And so for someone, Art, who's been living this, but also doing the work for, for decades, I mean, what do you make of this moment, this, this political, this social moment that we find ourselves in? Well, we are in Pride Month. 
it's a time to celebrate, but it's also for us a time to recharge for the battles we're currently involved with and those we will have to fight again. Sadly, many folks have found political gold in attacking gay people, in attacking trans people, in attacking trans children. It is despicable. And we want to say thank you to your staff for giving us a great summary of some of the terrible, terrible ways in which gay people are being treated across this country. However, we are on the right side of history. We will win again. We didn't think we'd have to fight these battles again, but we will, and we will win again. We and the rest of our community have spent certainly ourselves 50 years fighting against hate and bigotry, standing up for the right side. We're not going to stop now. Uh, have, we're going to win. We're going to win again. I have about less than 30 seconds left. Very quickly, your advice to someone who's watching, kid perhaps who hasn't come out yet, doesn't feel safe doing so in this moment. Very quickly, what would you tell them? the joys of the internet that you can find out information. And young people know they're being talked about. They know they're being targeted. This whole movement right now against gay people will end up hurting those who are attacking us because the children will learn for themselves what they need to know to progress and thrive.